So, uh, welcome back, or good afternoon. Welcome, who joins us here for the very first time today. Um, we go on with the program in the afternoon, and we have uh, several uh, speeches and presentations this afternoon. Um, the first one is from Robert Marx. We had him already on stage here in the morning, director of Marx Technik, and he will talk about the cooperation between small and medium-sized enterprises and universities because they can create environmentally friendly propulsion systems. Thank you, Robert. Yes. Thank you, Marcos. Dear guests, good afternoon. I wanted to say good morning, but as you said, we had already our presentations this morning. It's already afternoon. I don't know if everybody had already lunch. If not, um, after my presentation, take your time for that. Yes, I want to talk to you about uh, SMEs and the collaboration with universities and also with um, the people from the governments who have funds for all these inventions and researches. And uh, why do I talk about this? I'm an entrepreneur, so I have a company, I have 45 employees, and uh, we are developing and selling powertrain systems for industrial, but also for marine um, usage. And um, we always thought, if we want to go on with sustainable powertrains, we have to develop something also as a small company, but we don't have the opportunity to collect the money. We don't have the opportunity to do real research. And uh, what we learned in this project, what I want to present to you is, what is the difference between development and research? And it's a big difference. Um, research is scientific and development is engineering. And uh, we are engineers, so we need people who do research and I, press the button here. So we had some other companies. Uh, we, we were a kind of network where we exchanged knowledge, uh, suppliers, customers, and so on. And uh, we founded a group called EchoShip 60. Why EchoShip 60? Echo is clear. It could be ecological, could be economical. Everything is in. Ship, marine, and 60 because we said we want to go up to a maximum of 60 feet. So EcoShip 60 is a collaboration of companies and later on also universities in northern Germany. Companies from Hamburg, from Schleswig-Holstein, or uh, from, from uh, Lower Niedersachsen. Lower Niedersachsen? No. Huh? Lower Saxony. Lower Saxony. So my, my, my original language is German, so when you have questions afterwards, uh, you can uh, raise them in German too. Um, so we want to set new standards for innovative propulsion systems because we feel the pressure from the legislation in Germany, but also from EU. We talked about that this morning. Um, the emission regulation will change. It will change what do we do with old boats, so uh, end of life of these boats, and uh, how can we reduce the CO2 footprint of these boats when they, when, they dr when they drive or when they are used. So we have a mission. Every association, every group has a mission, and um, we develop environmental friendly propulsion and energy systems for small and medium size, up to 60 meters, what is huge, um, up to 60 meter boats, and uh, that allows to, to run the boats on low cost and high performance. So that is our mission, that's how we started five years ago, and we have mainly small enterprises uh, working in this. We have um, some universities, but we also work with bigger companies um, who have already technology for, for uh, um, hydrogen or um, other things. So we try to use this network to get, to get everything together. And um, these are the companies we are working with or who are in these group active members. Um, we, we do it with a network management company because we also find out we cannot do it by ourselves, so organizing ourselves. So because it gets slower and slower and slower because everybody has a daily business. So we, we uh, contracted a company, it's called DSN. They are located in Kiel and um, they take care that the ball is always running. So that is, is very important. Our, our universities we are working with uh, who do the research, they are always try to push the SMEs and the SMEs say, hey, we have to look at our daily business, we have to sell, we have to do this or that. And um, DSN is always taking care, hey, 
We have a meeting once a month. What are the next steps? What are you doing? And how is it going further? So you can see the companies, some boat builders there, like Abiking and Bas Rasmussen, um, a propeller manufacturer, an engine manufacturer, a manufacturer of, of, of um, um, small components to, to connect, connect lines. So most of the companies are up to 50, 50, 60 employees. And for me, personally, I'm an engineer as a background. Um, for me, the most interesting thing was that there are so many companies with a high level of knowledge, but not able to research to develop these products into market because of daily business, because of money, because of, of market. And uh, so this, this networking thing is what brought us two steps further. And um, I will show you later on a project we are, we are actually working on and that will be finished um, later this year. So all these uh, six points you see around is, is, is what we're living for and what we're living with. And um, that makes our network even stronger. Um, we have several projects we started in the meantime. So an electromechanical pitch system, um, fuel cell technology system, a compact genset, and uh, a connection between hull and deck that is very sophisticated. Um, a readout system for energy consumption, because if, when we look at CO2 footprint, we also have to look what do we consume, because everything we consume makes CO2, and um, a small, smart water jet marine system. And um, one project that is under development is a, is a very smart bunker system for, for bigger vessels, also to keep control about um, emission and, and uh, these things. So this is our prototype boat, and um, it's a 16-meter boat, and uh, it could be used for pleasure in a different design, um, but it could be also a work boat. And uh, why did we took this boat? Because these boats have a limited engine room, these boats have limited space and limited weight, but on the other hand, it has to have a certain speed to, to operate. So we had the guidelines in which we have to develop and research our, our solution. And um, that is re a really interesting project because usually you start on a white piece of paper, you draw something and uh, you build the first prototype. And, uh, but when you have already guidelines, it, it makes it even more interesting, especially in a network. And many thanks to Ecoship 60, to the, to the network organizers who always said, hey, please look at the guidelines and you have to move within that. Um, so how does, a, does the system completely work? We do the research. That's most important when you want to get money from, from the government to, 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 to fund for that. Um, because development is not um, funded, but uh, research is funded. And if you want to make research, what I said earlier, you need universities. So. I can, can only ask for, for, for the smaller companies, have contact to the universities and talk to these guys. Um, they have uh, a lot of force in, in research and it can assist us as smaller companies to bring products into market. So research, then development, then finalizing um, the system sounds very easy. It's prototype building and then look for a user. The best idea is you look for a user at the beginning, not to develop something nobody is using. So, but then you find a user who wants, is able to test it, designing and prototyping it, and then launch it to market. And um, our first project that goes to market this year is a um, sustainable powertrain system. Um, it's funded by the Bundesministerium für Wirtschaft. What is the English for that? Uh, Ministry for Economic and uh, Climate, whatever. So um, they have a big fund of money um, for research in, in this area. And most of the companies who get this money are huge organizations. So Philips, for example, they have a huge number of people working in Berlin and Brussels just for getting funds. And the small companies don't have the opportunity because we have to work the whole day and um, selling, and uh, so no people for, from us are in Brussels, and that's why we need 
these networks. So this is a compact fuel cell technology system or technology um, we developed. And um, we have these uh, five companies or four companies plus um, the, the um, University of Applied Science from, from Flensburg um, in this network. And everyone had a special step. And um, that's what I, ah, that's not working, okay. Um, what I said, you have a limited space. So we have space for a battery, we have space for a water tank, um, for the fuel cells, for a generator, and um, all this. And every one of these companies makes one part. It's, it's a, let's, you have to see it like a puzzle. And um, it's five, it, it's five uh, projects, and each of these projects is made by one company, but they all together make the, make the whole picture of the powertrain system for this boat. Looks really nice. The university did it. So, um, so what, is, what was the aim of the project? We want to take out the classical combustion engine and implement a fuel cell system um, and um, trying to have at the end the opportunity to scale it also to bigger or smaller boats. But the main goal was look at the use case of this boat and putting a fuel cell system in it um, so that we don't have a combustion engine in. The key challenges were the complexity because when you have a pure fuel cell system, you don't have the power you need to run the boat. Um, then the efficiency to run with the, with the hydrogen or methanol you have in the boat or in the vessel. So we had to decide, do we use hydrogen or, or, or methanol? We decided for methanol because you need less space. Um, and um, the economic risk, when you research and develop and you find out, hey, I have a great idea and it's a perfect product, but it costs 5 million euro. Um, so everybody says congratulations for your product, but uh, there's no market left. And we always try to bring it in this area, in this fence, um, and uh, developing. So first of all, we tried to integrate the fuel cell. And um, we have a manufacturer of a fuel cell who said, OK, we, we have a fuel cell. You can run it with methanol. And um, you have uh, a certain output. But when you have the methanol, you need a tank system. So for uh, hydrogen or methanol, what I said, so we developed the tank system running on a boat. And the next system is, OK, when we have hydrogen or methanol, we need a safety system. Because it's different than diesel. So the, the risk you have for explosion or whatever is much higher and much different than what we had in the past. So after we checkmarked all these three boxes, we said, OK, what happens with the rest, with the, with the, with the heat that is still left from the fuel cell, but also from the, from the generators. I will explain later. Um, so can we use this heat, too, to make it possible to, 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 to harvest for, um, for our propulsion system? And um, that is the last project also to, to, the, to recover the heat, bringing it back, harvesting it, and making energy out of it, and still in the, in the um, frame we have in this boat. So ah, I have to go back. So um, we have um, at the end a system where the, the vessel can make their usual um, um, drive, their usual use case by the fuel cell. And, uh, but if it needs extra power because you have storm or you, you are out of the harbor or whatever, we do it by jazz generators. They are also driven by methanol. And uh, we integrated all in this space. And um, we, yeah, we launched this product in a boat by late summer this year and presented to the Ministry of Economic and these guys who found, founded us. And um, we are really happy. It took five year, four years total. But um, I'm very happy with it. What I said, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm very happy to have this network. And um, if you are an entrepreneur too, too I would um, force you to build these networks. And then you have the opportunity to bring new products, totally new products, 
to get into the market which are environmental friendly, which are ready for the next 10 or 15 years. And uh, when we look at our, our presentation of we had uh, one hour ago, um, we get a new emission regulation within the next five, six years, and this regulation will last for 10 years. And the industry has to make the steps now to prepare what has to be done for the next 15 years or 20 years. Because when you look at the market, a boat will live for 20 years or 25 or 30 years. And um, when, the, uh, when the EU or Germany makes a new regulation, um, we have still boats in the market for 20 years. And we have to look beyond that. So this will work only when you're working in a network and when you have the right partners. And um, my experience is that it's absolutely possible to make from, from scratch a final product where you have a market and um, what is sustainable and not only driven by money or by, or by system, sustainability, but you have the whole picture to, to, to have a solution for your customer at the end of the day. Yeah, Robert, it's working? No. It's not working? He's no. silent. He pressed the button, perfect. Okay. Um, thank you, Robert, very interesting. Do we have any questions from the audience? I will come with my microphone and then... English or German? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I translate. Um, you said... No question, but I have a question. So this, uh, uh, you are ready by summer? Yes. Uh, limited to a certain size of boat or yacht? Yes, this boat we, we, uh, we have here is 16 meters. And um, it's working for a, for a pleasure boat, 16 meters, or for a light commercial boat too. Because I know someone who is interested in larger units. Is it possible as well? Yeah. From the, from the first moment on, we, we looked how, to, how is it possible to scale it up because we, we, we said when we founded the, the, the network that we go up to 60 meters, what is almost your market, mm -hmm. um, so we can scale it up. But we started with the 16 meters now just to have it also financially um, in the right frame. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Robert. Any other questions? Yes. Ja, ja. Ich hätte eine Frage und zwar, wie ist es denn im Verbrauch? Wie, viel, wie unterscheidet sich das? Also ist der vom Combustion Engine? Äh, ist die Combustion Engine quasi immer noch ähm, günstiger oder sind die jetzt ungefähr gleich in den ähm, Verbrauchskosten? Nein, also wenn man, wenn man äh, sich den Preis anguckt zwischen einem, einem, also das Boot hat zwei Motoren normalerweise oder in der, in der alten Ausführung mit ungefähr 300 PS und wir erreichen jetzt mit, dem, mit der Kombination aus, aus Brennstoffzelle und den Elektrogeneratoren ähm, ungefähr 260 PS, um in PS mal zu sprechen, ähm, sind wir heute vielleicht bei Faktor 6 oder Faktor 7. Aber es ist eben so ein One-Off erstmal und wenn man eine größere Serie macht, dann wird man den Preis sicherlich reduzieren können, aber man muss ganz klar sagen, ein Verbrennungsmotor gibt es 100.000-fach und die, die Fertigungsstraßen sind da, ähm, das ist immer noch günstiger. Aber wie gesagt, wenn man weg will von den Verbrennungsmotoren, die mit, mit, mit Erdöl betrieben werden, dann muss man halt gucken, welche Lösungen gibt es da und dann ist der Preis sicherlich nicht mehr an erster Stelle. Okay, Tra translation needed. Okay, um, uh, the question was, okay, is it far more expensive to integrate this fuel cell? instead of a normal combustion engine at the moment, yes. But if the demand is higher, then the price will go down. For In sure. the moment, it's six, six to eight times, um, actually. But um, this is a one-off. And um, if we have a, have a mass production, it, it, will go, it will go down. But we have to recognize that uh, combustion engines have uh, a 100-year history, also in production, and it's very cheap to manufacture. Okay, thank you, Robert. Then we go on with okay. the program. Markus, he is here. You. If you want to talk yeah. to him in person, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Very interesting.